Hello folks, welcome back. It's been a long time since we've had a regular video here on this channel. A uh, lot, lot has happened since then, uh, but we did have a comment from one of our uh, kitten videos of a man who wanted to see more about the track. So, here it is. It's uh, since being married has become a daily driver of sorts, and then uh, we got a, a cop car to replace it. So, <laughs> but in its time of being a daily driver, it, we fixed it up and it is as more reliable and, and uh, hardworking as ever. It might not look very pretty, but it uh, is completely functionally uh, reliable and it's just a dream to drive. So I'll bring you in closer and show you around it. Just do a little, little uh, once over around it and you can ask questions and maybe make some more videos after that. There will be a future video about uh, what all has transpired here in pretty, uh, pretty soon. And who you married. Yes. <laughs> she hasn't shown her face on camera yet. No. <laughs> Although you hear in the background. All right, so I just have it open and we're looking at the interior of it. Um, to be honest, it's been so many years since I've seen my own content. I don't recall what I've covered on this truck. So I'll just kind of give you a general once over. I bought this truck when I was um, not making as much income, it was intended to be a project truck, and I had some grandiose ideas for it, especially um, in the earlier years, but I don't know if I'll do them now at this point. You know, it's obviously in the rough, and it's not restored by any means, but I, I've heard from a lot of people that that's kind of in recently, but regardless of any of that, I do plan on restoring this eventually someday, you know, giving it a nice paint job, and fixing the cracks on the dash and the cracks on the steering wheel. Maybe get rid of the wiggle. <laughs> anyway, I got some aftermarket gauges, you know, to check oil pressure, water volts, you know, nothing fancy. Got a PA system in it since I purchased it. Got the radio put in. <coughs> because actually it didn't come with a radio when I purchased it. We still need to get speakers though. We need five of them all around. We got a couple in the back, a couple of doors, and one in the uh, dash here. Starts and drives really well, I mean. It's got the big 460 V8. One of the things I want to do in the near future is get dual exhaust on it. it. Sounds good as it is, but it does have the original exhaust manifolds in there, so it has um, some exhaust leaks, cracks in those manifolds. So, you know, for uh, tuning purposes and for mainly good sound and a little more power, with some three inch dual exhaust with an H pipe, Flowmaster mufflers, and full length fetters on there. Coming out the side. So, I want to have them come out right about here. Some way. As you can tell, we're using it as kind of a garbage truck at the moment. We've just moved into this house, so we're kind of trimming some trees and stuff and uh, doing the whole bit. So, as you can tell, it runs very well. I have taken this thing to four different mechanics and I've got a little bit of knowledge myself. I'm no mechanic by any means, but no mechanic has figured out how to tune this vehicle uh, according to manufacturer's specifications because, well, frankly, it doesn't have manufacturer parts in it. They don't know, but they're assuming that it has a mild cam in it and it is the uh, big block 460. So uh, why don't we go there next? I'll show you under the hood. So here we are in the engine department of the vehicle. This is where the crowning, uh, crown jewel of the whole truck is. We got our 460 big block here. Um, we do have uh, some minor performance parts in here. We've got a Canon filter that desperately needs to be cleaned, but it's been quite crazy lately, so give me a little break. <laughs> we got a 750 CFM uh, Edelbrock 4 barrel carburetor and Edelbrock former RPM intake manifold dual plane. Also have some, you know, MSD coil and plugs. I did have an MSD distributor, but, you know, this is no bash to MSD, but I know they make great products, but I have never gotten an MSD distributor for my dad's 66 Mustang or for this truck that has worked. And I don't know what it is, if the mechanics are incompetent or, or what, but they've always said that it was faulty in some way and they replace it with something like this which is a more high performance standard uh, points distributor which 
you know, falls under the same problems of needing to be maintained in uh, fairly regular intervals. I think they got some hotter plugs in there. I got a stronger alternator that is like twice as powerful amp meters, uh, or however you pronounce it. <laughs> it's been a long year or so. Um, it's twice as strong as your normal alternator you would get on this. And I did that so that I could run off-road lights at some point, a winch at some point, you know, other things, you know. And I know that I have, uh, I filmed the replacement of this entire radiator and cooling system in this. Still running strong. Um, it has a more industrial thermostat, which I think the only difference is it has a little stronger spring and it opens up later, hotter. So it runs around 200 degrees, usually. And if you're in stop and go traffic, it's around 210. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's, that's about it here. You know, it has your standard, your standard uh, exhaust manifolds. I don't want to change all that. It's got a C6 automatic transmission. So those are really strong drag racers. Uh, eventually, I'd like to put a gear vendor under overdrive on there, which splices all the gears. So you get six speeds. Helps with your fuel economy, helps with towing, helps with a lot of things. So that'll make it more drive drivable because at its current way, 460, makes about 7 MPG no matter what. No matter how much weight you're hauling, no matter how fast you're going or aggressive. Although on the freeway, because of its gearing, I believe it has 375 gears in the back. It's camper special, so it has one ton suspension and a Dana 60 rear end with a limited slip differential. It, so it's actually, it holds its own in the winter. We had to do some winter driving with it last winter, and it was a little spooky, but, you know, if you're safe and sane, you know, it, it works perfectly. So, yeah, it, um... I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, that, that's that's what it is. Oh, uh, weather stripping. There we go. I put some of this, like, foam right here. Oh, there's a spider right there. Because it was uh, leaking. I don't know what the factory way of it is supposed to be. I do know that the hood isn't lined up the way it's supposed to be. Uh, and I don't know how to fix that. And I don't have the time to figure it out. So um we just put this here temporarily to keep the water from coming in because the water was pouring all over this air cleaner and we couldn't have that for the winter otherwise we'd be sucking water into the system which isn't necessarily a good thing so we uh got that as a temporary fix and it suffers from the same problem that it seems every vehicle from this era no matter what the maker model is has and that is it leaks water into the passenger side inside just leaked water from the firewall I'm guessing uh, heater core maybe I'm not sure but um, this seems to have helped it quite a bit so it must be leaking in here somewhere uh, I'm not sure but if anyone knows that would be great because it happened to the 66 Mustang it happened to this it happened to my mom's 73 um, three-quarter ton pickup as well as Chevy uh, the square body I'm not sure what's going on there. <laughs> if anyone knows, that would be really cool. Yeah. Oh, we 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 back. We replaced the uh, grill here with some, you know, LMC truck stuff. You know, pretty pretty straightforward. These are just little uh, lights from. They had the yellow ones on there. I think last time we put these on, wired them up. Uh, they're just simple fog lights from like AutoZone. Nothing fancy yet. Yeah. I have uh, a lot of hopes and dreams for this. Mainly getting a lot more power out of this because in 74 they had kind of a power, an extreme power cut. A lot of torque still though. So that's about all I could think of to talk about. If you have any questions, have anything else that you wanted any more details on, then uh, just let me know. So, gentlemen, have a nice day. There was one more quick thing. Um, I have always been disappointed with these mirrors. I got these mirrors again at like AutoZone for like, oh no, Harbor Freight even worse for like ten dollars because the ones that it came with were not only really small but they were actually broken so i went to the local wrecking yard and i found these these are quite vintage and they look really nice i forgot what they call them they're like um west coast mirrors or something yeah that's uh, pacific coast west coast something like that yeah 
But all they got to do is uh, figure out how to tap them into the door and and figure out exactly where they go. And I like the look of these a lot better, and they'll be a lot more functional for what I like to do with the truck. So, yeah. These are the next project to come. One of them is actually busted, so I'll have to find a place that will replace the glass or the, the mirror on that. But yeah, that'll be the next one to come. <laughs>